Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're here to talk about the Ottawa Sen Senators season that's just been and the outlook on their 2023-24 season to come. So we'll kick right into their season that just was. Um, it was a so-so season for them, uh, a lot of improvement, but I feel like for what they did, they were a bit disappointed in where they finished. They were quite hopeful that they would be um, in, in one of those wildcard spots and they ended up falling six points short um, for that final wildcard spot. So they finished the year on 39 wins and 86 points. Like I said, six points shy of Florida <clears throat> in that final uh, wildcard spot. So some might look at it as a as a bit of a failure, considering a lot of people were paying them to make um, the wildcard spot. However, for me, um, I thought this was right where they were going to be. And I, I actually really enjoyed their season. I saw a lot of um, improvements uh, in their, in their squad and their side. They're, they're quite young. Um, so, you know, seeing that development in uh, Stutzler and uh, it would have been nice for, for Norris to see a bit more from him, but obviously he, went down and uh, was out for pretty much the entire season. So that was the disappointment, I guess, in that front. But, you know, Jake, the likes of Jake Sanderson, you know, he, he had a fantastic season. Um, so, yeah, look, I feel like for me, if I was not a Ottawa fan, I would have been really, really happy with what I saw. Um, they obviously had some issues defensively um, and had some issues in net, which... Yeah, we'll talk about a bit more, but it seems like they've sort of gone out and addressed those. Uh, they picked up Chikrin at the sort of deadline last year or last season. It actually happened this year, um, which I thought was a fantastic pickup. It, it addressed some, some some needs on there and um, what a pickup you get him for another, for the rest of last, last season and the next two seasons going. Um, and look, if it doesn't pan out at the end of the day, you're going to be able to move him for assets because he is a fantastic player um but all in all this Ottawa team the season that's just gone you had to you have to enjoy it they only finished six points back um they had a couple of questions around like I said that goaltending and defense they were without their one of their better players in Norris for majority of the season which hurts you know like that's Stutzler and Norris one-two punch uh, down the center. When you when you miss that, um, you miss Norris for the majority of the season. That hurts. That's a big player to try and replace. So to finish six points back without having him for the majority of the season, I thought was a fantastic, fantastic result for Ottawa. Um, I loved watching these guys this season. Um, I thought it was yeah. I thought the way they played was was fantastic. They were exciting. Um, they just needed to, yeah, they just need to fix that defensive structure and they needed to fix the goaltending um, issue. But that's pretty much, that pretty much sums up the season that's just gone for them. Again, really positive in my opinion for all them. I expect them to be even better. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Jaden to run you guys through the projected lineup currently for the 2023-24 season as per cap friendly. Yeah, sweet. So, 5 million in cap space, so it's a bit deceptive with a couple uh, RFAs to resign. First line, you've got Kachuk, Stutzler, and Giroux. Uh, solid first line. Kubelik comes in via trade to replace the Brinkett. Norris middle, uh, Batherson on the right, so solid top six. Then you've got um, Joseph, Pinto, and Grieg uh, on the third. Pinto to resign. Looking at a bridge deal, most likely. Uh, Kelly, Kasselik, and Sokolov, to, um, who was also to resign, but that's your your bottom pairing there. Uh, defenders, Shabat, Chikrin, who they brought in last year, Sanderson, Zub, Brandstrom, and Hamannik. So, decent defense as well. Probably really underrated um, defense, and slight, I would say slightly underpaid as well in regards to just how good it is. Um, you know, Chikrin 4.6. Uh, the only high paid contract there is Chabot. Chabot. And uh, goal is here. They bring in Corpusalo. Uh, long term deal. Kind of a risky move. He did play amazing with um, LA, but kind of a risky move there. Uh, Forsberg, as he is on the injured reserve, but as the backup, had a kind of miserable year. 
Then you got Sogard, who played about 19 games last year, who did pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see if he could step up and take the uh, this uh, backup spot from Forsberg. And I could see that happening um, for sure for how he played last year. Or even Corpusello if um, he gets injured. Scratches, you got Zach McEwen they brought in this year for some depth for a few years. Um, Cartier, and then Bernard Docker. So, and Bernard Docker being that kind of 7th D, um, you know, 26th overall they had uh, in 2018. Good, decent depth. Nothing to brag about too much there. But, you know, it's a good solid 7th uh, D when you need. So, pretty good there. Uh, looking at the draft, obviously they didn't have really any picks this year, so there's not much depth coming through from this year. 2022, they had um, no first round pick as well, and they only had really late picks. They had a few third rounds, uh, signing three players in that draft to um, EOCs. And then you have, in notable losses, Alex Debrinkit. Obviously the big loss there, uh, traded to Detroit. Uh, Brown to Boston, Lucini to Minnesota, Saborin to San Jose, to Kim Talbot to LA, Gambrell to Toronto, and Gauthier to New York Islanders. So some big notable losses there um, for Ottawa. They don't really bring anybody in too big. They do obviously replace Kim Talbot um, on the goalie side. They obviously bring in Cooper League to somewhat re- replenish Debrinkit's uh, goal scoring. But other than that, it's not like they got overly better. Um, you could even argue they got worse in some sense. But I feel like this is a solid team because obviously they get players back like Norris and other injured players from last year. Uh, just a little bit on the dead cap. They've still got Matt Murray for 1.5 mil. And then a couple buyouts. Uh, 1.8 from Ryan. Colin White, 800,000. And then obviously into uh, next year, they get money back. And Del Zotto as well for 750. So about 5 mil in a dead cap for this year. Gets better next year onwards, which is good. But they'll have to wear that for just this year. On, um, this year. I don't think they have any issues uh, signing Shane Pinto. Uh, I feel like it'd be a probably a two-year contract around 3 mil. That's what I would be doing. I've heard a lot less, like 1.5 mil or something even less. And I'm like, he scored 20 goals. That's no way it's happening even though he has a 10.2C that he can't get off-sheeted. I wouldn't be signing that if I was Pinto. So I'm looking at a one- to two-year deal. You're looking at about two-and-a-half mil um, plus in regards to Pinto than whatever Sokolov gets. And then that's basically, you know, three-plus mil of your salary cap gone. Left you only, with only a handful left for any other signings or whatnot in the future. Decent team. On the bounce back. Getting these players back from injuries, hopefully they can stay in, um, on the lineup throughout the whole season. But if they do, I think this is a very scary team because the defense is sound. Corpusalo is the risk, but if he plays like we know he can, then this is a really solid, scary team that could easily make playoffs and easily um, have a little run in the playoffs too. Yeah, I think um, the big question mark, as you just said, is Corpusalo. Um, one of Ottawa's big troubles, as I mentioned in the in the intro, was basically their their goaltending was not great. Um, Corpusalo has that ability to be that player, um, to be that goaltender that they need. Four million dollars for Corpusalo could could almost look like an absolute steal if he can put up some of the numbers he has in the past. Um, you know, even for Columbus last year, he was a 0.913 save percentage on that Columbus side. So, you know, like, yep, 3.17 goals against, but he was on a absolute dog shit Columbus side. And then, like, as you said, he went to Los Angeles, put up some really good numbers inside that until obviously he comes up against, um, <laughs> Mick David in six games and uh, gets absolutely trounced. Um, but yeah, like his his form in previous years for Columbus has been pretty, you know, pretty up there in terms. Like he's got a playoff, he's got a playoff run where he had nine games at point nine four one with a one point nine say uh, goals against. 
So he's done it. He's put up good numbers throughout his career. The question mark is, is can can he do it for Ottawa? So it's 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 one of those things which I think it is a risk and it is one of those gambles. But I think it's like, because it's five years, like it's it's a big gamble. Like if you if he's absolutely shit this year and next, you've still got him for three years. That's four mil locked up, but it's it's four mil. It's not like they've locked him up long term for six, seven, eight million. Four million dollars. Yep, the term is 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 pretty long, but I feel like four million dollars is something you can wear, especially if he can put up that, you know, point nine nine one point nine two save percentage for Ottawa. Like I feel like if he can get those back to those numbers and the numbers that he was showing up last year with a better team in front of him, yeah, he he could be absolutely huge for Ottawa. He could be exactly what they need because they could finally have a goaltender in front of them that that's going to help them and not leak um, weak goals. So, yeah, it's it's a big, big gamble, but I think it's a gamble that they 100% had to take. It's worth taking, and I actually feel like this could could go the other way for them. Like, it could go the way they want it to. I feel like it's got more chance of being a success than being a bust. Yeah. Um. And look, he's got a sound defense in front of him. Uh, it would be kind of the same situation in LA. And uh, if he did it in LA, I can't don't see why he can't do it in Ottawa with uh, this mm. de- with this defense, especially with um, Pierce coming back. Obviously, they're not going to be adding too much more because um, their salary cap situation. Uh, but I don't see anything wrong with this. I think it's a very well balanced um, D. Uh, I'd take this D over pretty much more than half the league's D any day of the week. So. I feel like he's going to have a better time here. He can probably relax a little bit more in that, in that regards, um, which would be good for him. And so I feel like he's going to be able to do that. It, it would be good to see a full year with Chikrin as well and how mm-hmm. he plays. Uh, obviously, once they got Chikrin, Ottawa kind of declined a little bit, and it was kind of funny to see. Um, so we'll have to see if that was just uh, just a fluke or if um, that is something that's a problem. Yeah, but, I mean, he only he only played the twelve games. I know, so I know, but it was it was still funny. I know the season was sort of ending too, but it yeah. it was. I just found it a little bit funny that um, it's like, oh no, he's brought an Arizona curse or something with him. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, look, I think I think a year. I think the you know having the preseason and all the rest of that with Ottawa and, and being able to meld and get used to their structure. I think that's going to help him, um, and I think. Once he's got a hold of that, which I dare say he'll have before the season even starts, um, we're we're going to see a pretty good turnaround with this Ottawa back, um, like blue line. Um, my biggest concern with Ottawa, I think at the moment, is that I'm not even concerned that they lost to Brinkett. I think Kubalik has the ability to be. Don't get me wrong; he's not. I'm not sitting here going, "Yeah, he's he's going to put up the Brinkett numbers." Like 100. Like, who cares about Brinkett? But I think Kubalik is good enough to, you know, be that replacement on – be that replacement yeah. in a sense, right? Especially for 2.5 million. Well, exactly, right? He's, his contract's a lot cheaper. Um, he freed up that cap space, which is what they needed. Um, he's going to probably bring you 20 goals, especially playing on a line with Norris and Batherson, if that's where he does play, which, which I dare say he will. That top six is absolute fire. Right, that top six is ridiculously good. There is not a single contract on that that I look at and go, that's a terrible contract. That's going to age really poorly. I think they have locked in some real good talent long-term on some real good deals. My concern is that bottom six. Shane Pinto, I think as you touched on, will sign a a bridge deal of some sort. Might be a one-year, show us what you can do deal. Like you did 20 goals last year. Can Can you do it again? Um, you know, but outside of that, I think Joseph is a solid, solid bottom six player. Greg, he's pretty fresh. Kelly, pretty fresh. Catholic, pretty fresh. Sokolov, pretty fresh. So outside of Joseph and Pinto, you don't have a huge amount. Like mm. they, 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 they played a, th- a bit, um, last year, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's my concern. They brought in McEwen. 
who I think brings them a bit of a bit of that grit and and that bit of that toughness. So I expect him to probably um, be in that lineup a fair bit. Uh, it'll be probably Sokolov if if he can if he can prove himself and get into the lineup, he might push McEwen out. But otherwise, I could see him being that that replacement. Um, so yeah, that bottom six does concern me a little bit. Um, but at the same time, they're all young. That's the one thing that you got to love about this Ottawa side is they're all young. So it's not like we're talking about a bunch of, you know, 30 plus year olds on the bottom six that have really been dog shit their entire careers or, or they're clearly done. They're, they're all relatively young players. So there's nothing to say that these guys won't take a step forward. You know, the, the, there's nothing to say that these guys won't um, improve and, and take that next step in their careers and be an absolute phenomenal bottom six. So this this could be uh, this is the only area that I'm sort of concerned about. Corpusalo's question mark, but a hundred percent. If these guys can take this the correct step forward, oh, watch out for this Ottawa side because I think that top six is is absolute fire. If that bottom six can complement it. Yeah, they they could be absolute trouble and and and, uh, and uh, yeah uh, and a good good wild card potentially even a good top three yeah shout. I know I, that's a huge call yeah. given the teams they've got to overtake, but yeah, well like I, if, I could see it happening. Like they got five million, you you spend say three million um to sign these two players, maybe maybe three and a half. Let's just say um leaves you with one and a half. One and a half is uh you know. A good depth uh, player that they can go out and pick up, and that's without any moving any contracts or anything. So I I would like to see them add, uh, you know, one mil or maybe a little bit more, whatever whatever salary cap they have left, in a player that will play that bottom six role, that you will play 82 games, that can probably play the PK or something like that, and go from there. Um, one one of the points that I just wanted to say with this team is that it was uh, very indisciplined last year. It was the he- highest uh, penalised team in the league uh, with 1,027 penalty minutes. Uh, it was the only team in the thousands. Uh, I think it was Edmonton or something that was at 998. And they only had 36 fights, so that's about 180 uh, penalty minutes. So they need to clean that up. It's, you know, you look at some of the better teams, you know, Vegas was the least penalized team in the league. Uh, it was Florida, sorry, that was second. Um, it, Vegas was the least penalized team in the league and they won the cup. And that goes a long way, you know, you don't have to be on the penalty queue. They didn't have a bad penalty queue at 80%, but yeah, when you're on the power play more, obviously you're going to score more. And when you're on the penalty queue mm-hmm. more, you're going to concede more. So they have to shore up that, uh, I don't know what you have to do to get that through to some of the players uh, in regards to watching their sticks or, you know, watching your attitude and, you know, some attitude's good, some too much attitude's bad. But yeah, I, I would just like to see a little bit more discipline uh, for Ottawa just to take less penalty minutes. And that way they, I feel like this would flip really quickly because like I said, a great top six, but if your top six is um, your team's short, short man, uh, they're not on the ice. And if they are on the ice, they're not producing the points that you want them to be choosing. So that's the big key for me is uh, take less penalty minutes. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree with you. you like your Vegas um, point there, you know, that was at least that was the least penalized team in the league. Yet their penalty kill was dog shit, right? Well, I say dog shit, but like 77%, it wasn't great. They were 19th in the league. Yeah, imagine if they were the most if if they switch positions with Ottawa, where would Vegas have been? That could complete that could have completely railroaded their season. And that's you could almost say that to a point with Ottawa. You're the most penalized team, which means that you're on the penalty kill more, which means you're conceding more goals, because even at eighty percent, you're conceding one in five. So if you're on the penalty kill more, you're naturally conceding more, as you said, which means that, you know, that's the potential right there to fix something in their game. If they can if they can reduce those penalties, I'm not saying they have to go from worst in the league to best in the league, but if you can go from worst in the league to mid-table, that's that's 
automatically an mm. improvement and and you'll see you'll see that improvement in their games they'll probably lose less games because of a stupid penalty so all of a sudden that adds they only needed to make up six points last year so it's not like they're it's not like they're 10 15 20 points off the off the chase they're there they're around the mark so those little things like just being a little bit better disciplined could be the difference in those six points make um so yeah it's it's going to be really interesting to see uh, and i hope it's a focal point um for them because I'm sure, I'm sure their you know coaching staff have looked at that and gone, well, a penalty kill, we're we're reasonably happy with it. However, we were on the penalty kill way too much. Um, so yeah, definitely look out for that. One of the big things I I'm looking forward to with with Ottawa this year, um, this season is Stutzler and Norris one two punch down the center. We've, yeah, you can talk about your your one two, your your one C and your two C, all around the league. Like you know, you got your um, McDavid, Drysaddle, um, Crosby, Malkin. Uh, you know, you've got you've got so many of them through the years that you've had, which have been phenomenal. This one two punch of Stutzler and Norris. Stutzler is just going to continue to grow. He's only going into his fourth season. He had a 90 point season last year. Absolutely. He's going to be, I, I can't see him going backwards. I can only see him going forwards. Josh Norris, I just, it's going to be so good to see what he does and how he bounces back. Cause I could see that being one of the best one, two punches in the league. Um, you know, I'm not saying they're going to be a McDavid dry side on one point one, one, two punch, but I can definitely see them being one of the best one-two punches in the league. Um, so, and it's just so exciting looking at that age of those two players. Like they're both so young. Stutzler is twenty-one, and you know Josh Norris is what twenty, twenty-four years of age. So, yeah, very similar to the Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, um one-two punch at, at you know in New Jersey. It's just. They've got so much potential and yeah. they're only going to continue to grow and develop. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, Tim Stutzler in, in the you know, that massive year he had last year, him backing that up and then Josh Norris coming out and going, all right, I'm back. I had a year off with injury, but I'm going to bounce back and bounce back better than ever. That there mm. could be just absolute phenomenal in – in their season and they're making the playoffs. Yeah, and I agree. And someone who will get overshadowed there is Pinto, but that that is a solid uh, three lines. Uh, cool. You can run three lines. You don't have to run that fourth line too much. You know, you run them for eight to ten minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. That that so they've got the center depth, and you build a you build a team through from the center out. Uh, that's why centers go for premiums, and that's because they take face offs. They do all the other work. My only my only question is is that they do need wingers on the bottom six uh, to go alongside the um, the Pinto or the Castellek or something like that. That's what they need. But I'll be interested to see if Norris does bounce back to the season that he had uh, prior. I mm. think he will, especially with uh, the quality of players that they he'll most likely be paired with, with like a Cuba League. You know, maybe they throw him with a Kachuk some for some reason, uh, power play time and whatnot. We'll have to wait and see how you know how he's recovered, but I think he won't slow down. I think he'll have a really good season. Um, I, there's no reason for me to see with the people he's paired with that it wouldn't be like a 30 goal season, especially with the D oh. that's probably feeding him the puck and they've probably got the puck more than the opposition for the game. So yeah. Mm. Well, you look at that the the their first second, uh, that's a hundred goals right there. You know, Stutzler was, what, 39 goals last season. Norris obviously didn't play but uh, that much. But the season prior, I actually think even if you look at, you know, the games he did play, he was still on a pretty good pace. Um, oh, he played eight games, it's hard to sort of say. But one in four, I mean, mm. I mean that's, that's still going to net you a good, you know, he, he was on pace for Toy, but that's not, you can't really take that into consideration. The year before, 35 goals in 66 games is phenomenal. So 35 goals, if he can get anywhere near that level, 35 goals from him, 
you know, 40 goals from Sussa and, and 20, 25 from Pinto, that's 100 goals just from your top three centers. Mm. That's, that is an absolute weapon. So, granted, I Pinto think, yeah, had that's... to play higher minutes because of uh, Norris's injury. That has to yeah, be taken into account true. a little bit because I don't think you get the same production from Joseph and Grieg. Um, and that's, mm. what, that's what I'm saying. They need a winger. They need to bring in some winger to play alongside Pinto there because I feel like his, help, his production, him. yeah, to help him. Yeah. And yeah, that, that this, all that this team's lacking is um, bottom six winger at this point or a, a couple wingers. And honestly, with probably the amount of money they're going to have left, you could bring in one, maybe two if you're stretching it. Uh, if, well, it but you if you're going to run these Forsberg, kids. right? You could potentially move on Forsberg if Sogard can can step up to be that backup. Who's taking him though? That's the question. Um, well, yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that's the difficult part, and I guess you're not going to want to. You're not going to want to pay anyone to sort of, or you're not going to want to pay him too much. I mean, if someone's willing to take him for a seventh round pick or something, um, hmm. you know, it, it'd be all right. He's only he's only. He, he could get, for the get him on that. He's got like two years left. He would be UFA. Like he was over nine hundred save percentage, but three point two six goals against, but. Yeah, but like that 2.75 mil on top of the one or whatever mil they're going to have left, that could be, that could get you um, that winger that um, that you're talking about. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they try and try and do anything after the Pinto. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe Pinto does only sign for 1 to 1.5 mil. Can't see it, but it would be absolutely insanity if he did because – it would leave a lot of money. Like Sokol- uh, Sokolov is only going to sign for a mil. He's not going to sign for much more. So, yeah, if you were to 2.5 that and leave 2.5 in the salary, that could be enough to sort of to swindle someone over, especially if you got rid of Forsberg. That that, that sort of frees up about 4 mil mm. or, you know, 4 or 5 mil. We'll have to and see that, how yeah. high they are on Sogard and see if he's ready to take that step. Didn't do too bad yeah. in, in the season prior, so he could make that step. But obviously, this team's relying on a lot of young kids. It's a very young team, but that's how you build it, through the draft, through young young stars. And now they've got great great contracts with Kachuk, Stutzler, and Norris signed to those around $8 million contracts for long term. And those are going to age like fine wine. And like I said, it does remind me of like a New Jersey type situation. They don't really have any bad contracts here uh their, their star powers are signed to amazing long-term contracts and they're young so and they've got a great decor like um the only other thing with new jersey is they just have a better depth uh compared to ottawa here and that's all they've got to refine and like i said you get two two and a half mil that's two two um depth players there the bottom six that you can bring in that's what i would mm-hmm. like to see i know they haven't Got many um used many of their draft picks in the last two years, but I wouldn't mind seeing them uh, cough up a few more draft picks. Doesn't have to be first overall, um first round, but you know well, maybe maybe thirds and something like that, and bring in a couple more assets uh, for that depth. And I would be well, smitten smith- smith- with this team. Hmm, that's the question around it now, right? Is that they haven't had a they haven't had a first round pick in the last two years, so they can't be giving away first round picks willy nilly but they did just pick up a a first round pick from detroit so you know currently going into the next draft they've got two first round picks to come from so yeah there is that potential that they do try and move on one of those picks for someone to bring somebody in to strengthen this lineup and you know because do they need first round picks with the youth that they've got probably not like Honestly, I feel like they're, you know, if you're talking youth, you've got Kachuk, Stutzler, Norris, Batherson, Pinto. Yeah, that's five of your top six, and they're all pretty young. Um, like, you can even throw bloody Kubelik in there. He's only 27 years old. But mm. of all of those players I just mentioned, Batherson's your oldest with 25. So, you know, they've, they've got, they don't really need to bring in too many more prospects. Um, nah. They've got Sanderson coming through in the defense. Um, the rest of them, their defensive line, they're all like Hamannik is your your most is your oldest player, and he's the only player over thirty. The rest of them are all 
mid to low twenties. So yeah, I feel like to, to me that, that's not what they so- need. Well, exactly. It's sort of a problem in the sense like they do need veterancy, especially um, playoff veterancy, because once this team makes the playoffs, they'll probably very struggle because they don't have that um, experience. You know, you do have Jeru Jir- mm. in there and whatnot, but I'd like to well, see that's that. that's maybe what they need to look at, right? Yeah. Well, they, they need, need to, to look at some, be... you know, kind of like the Patrick Maroons type style. Situation. Um, yeah. yeah. C- kind of those type of players. Bring those in um, on your depth, on your wings. You know, give hey, some... Inst- talking points for these uh, young kids to live by and i would say mm. trade your either next year's or the year after's first round pick um and then because i feel like you're in a window now that you won't need that pick you'll be in mm. that'll be like a 25th plus uh pick at that point so i'll, I'll be trading those and bringing in some of that quality quality depth that that could bring in yeah, yeah, I, I definitely like that idea. When you mentioned um, the veterancy, I, I did go to Pat Maroon, that type of player, because I don't think they need a, a top six veteran, but I reckon if you could get a third liner veteran to come through who can just, you know, radiate that um, that leadership through the group and help mm. just, just guide these young lads, um, that's going to be huge. And I know, like, Pat Maroon's already signed and all the rest of that, but a, a player like him who, yeah, you know, he's not a, he's not a great top six forward. He's not, you know, but he, he knows what he is and he is going to be a very difficult player to play against every night, but he's also going to be fantastic in your locker room. He's a great person to have in the, in the franchise. Um so yeah, it'd be it'd be very interesting to see what this management does because I feel like they are they are so close. Mm. They haven't done much in, in terms of if you look at this, they've brought in you know McEwen, Corpusalo, and traded out to bring it for Kubalik, and outside of that, they've done nothing. But that's how close this team. That's how much they've work they've done over the last few years. That they've got that team right there. They just need to do a couple of more things especially on that bottom six. And then I feel like they're, they're ready to go. If, if everything falls into place, they can stay healthy. This lineup, you know, they don't lose a, a Joshua Norris for, for a season. They don't have um, injury played situations because I've read up on, on some issues they had, you know, Shabbat um, had a fracture in his wrist. Uh, Hamannick uh, injured his meniscus and MCL. Uh, last season, Chikrin's obviously had hamstring problems and all the rest of that. So hopefully those three on the d- defense can sort of get themselves right because if this team stays healthy and they make that one or two, you know, last ditch moves to get some veterans in, yeah, this this team mm. uh, will will be pushing for a wild card, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I'd even say top three. Um, if, yeah. if, if they yeah, add like, if they add that piece and they don't get the injury plague uh, season, and Corbisalo mm-hmm. is at least a point nine zero five or more, uh, I think that's yeah. easily doable. And yeah, that was yeah. that was my call a little bit earlier. Um, you know, I, I I know it was a bit crazy and a bit out there with you know Boston, Toronto, Tampa, those and Florida. Those are the teams that they're fighting for that top three. But yeah. Like, yeah. I, I can see it happening. Um, I, I, I can see them kicking out card. Tampa because Tampa's just lost so much this year again that it's really hard to see that they're going to maintain it. They hold on. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I could definitely see them kicking out Tampa out of the top three, um, Tampa into a wild card race, and then that, that, I just have to see that veterancy because, you, you know, it's all good to do it, but once you get there, this team probably won't do too much because they just don't have that experience that, like we all say, it's a different game in the playoffs because the rules get thrown out the, the window. And the reason why Pat Maroons and all that work is because they're big bodies and you just big big hits get laid, um, basically illegal hits get made, and that's why injuries happen, and that's why the likes of the types of Pat Maroons work. So that's the, the style, the esque I would like to see um, Ottawa recruit. If they do that, it's an amazing off season. I could definitely see them in the playoffs. Uh, how far they go, we'll have to wait and see if they do make it. But yeah, um, definitely probably one of my top teams for biggest improvers uh, over, over, from what we saw last season to this season. 
yeah, look, I, I don't know in terms of points how much they improve. I could see them improving by about, you know, 10, 10 to, to 12 yeah. points, um, uh, being around yeah. that mid-90s. Um, but I definitely feel like we're going to see some of the issues and gaps they had last year that held them back. Um, I, I, I think they're going to work on that, fix that, their yeah. defensive structure, their goaltending um and I feel like that's going to change because to hit 86 points last year with some of those issues that they had is is a pretty darn good effort. So, yeah, I, I, I dare say, yeah, it might not be the biggest points change in terms of, nah. you know, improvement-wise, but I, I do think we're going to see them around that mid-90s mark. Well, I think I, when I say biggest improvement, I, I, I'm saying, like, visual, like... Uh, I I scouting in regards to yeah. what you see on ice. Um, it might yeah. not be points wise because they did have a, a decent season last season. You know, mm. obviously like a Columbus or something that finished all the way at the bottom could just flip it. So yeah, I think on the ice, looking at it, I feel like this will probably be one of the best teams to watch in regards to improvement. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. that's all for me there. No, I'm I'm looking forward to watching these guys. I enjoyed them last year. I enjoyed watching their games. I I purposely sort of. That we're tuning into like if if I had to choose between a game, um, if Ottawa were playing, it was a lot of the times that's where I was gravitating towards. Um, I was just enjoying what they were doing. They frustrated me a little bit. Um, I'm glad I'm I'm not an Ottawa supporter, so it didn't frustrate me to the point of what it probably frustrated some Ottawa fans. But there were some really really great signs last year um, that you just had to be pleased with if you're a fan. So. Yeah, can't wait to see what they show this year, and I really hope it's headed in the right direction because yeah, I feel like it's 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 right there for them. Alrighty, guys, uh, feel free like the video, comment below what you think of the Ottawa Senators and how their season pans out this year, and uh, if they stay injury plagued or not injury plagued, and don't forget to subscribe, and leave the bell on for all notifications for more content. We'll be covering all 32 teams, and until uh, the next video, we'll catch you guys. See you later, guys.